G'day, Ben here from on3legs.com, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the new Fujifilm 18 to 135 millimeter lens uh, that's uh, weather resistant. Well, being an avid Nikon shooter, I've always used a D800, and that's what I'm filming this video with. Uh, the good thing with those more sort of pro-level cameras from Nikon is they're weather sealed, which means that you can sort of get out in the rain and and uh, not have to worry about whether the water's going to get in your gear, you can get out in the dust, you know, all of those you know sort of hazardous areas, and you never really have to worry about it. As soon as the Fuji came out, I started off with the XT1, uh, which was a great little camera for getting around in, but I didn't want to get it out in the rain or the dust because I knew it wasn't. Uh, you know, weather resistant. So, you know, as soon as the X-T1 came out, I knew it was, uh, you know, a huge advancement on the X-T1 and X-T2, so I grabbed the X-T1, and it is weather sealed, but it's no good having a weather sealed body if your lenses aren't weather sealed. So now, starting to, uh, you know, they're starting to release the weather resistant lenses, and the first one that I've got my hands on is this one here, it's the 18 to 135 millimeter. So I'm gonna give you a quick look uh, inside the box, and then we're gonna have a quick chat about the lens itself. So, um, as I open it up, I just got this this week, in fact, only a few days ago, and I've done quite a bit of shooting with it already, and uh, and so I can tell you a little bit about how I've found it, and I'll do that as well as I go through this. Um, but like you know, any product, owner's manual, other bits and pieces in there, bits and pieces rather, warranty booklet. Um, Fujifilm do give you these really nice uh, pouches uh, to put your lenses in uh, when you're out in the field or you've got them in your bag. Um, I'm pretty slack and don't use them very often, but there you go. Um, and inside the box, I'll sort of repackage just so you can see how it comes. Uh, inside the box is like this sort of egg crate, and uh, there's the beast there, one lens there, and then a lens hood. So they've, you know, as usual with Fuji, given you everything that you need, uh, and you know, it's really nicely packaged. There's certainly, you certainly couldn't fault the packaging from Fuji. It's well packaged, so it travels well, and if you did want to, you know, ever post it somewhere or transport it, the boxes. I always like to keep the boxes too because when you go to sell the lenses, I think if you've got a box to put it in, it always attracts a better price. Let's get that hood out of there. All right, so there it is. So there's your 18 to 135 mil. Uh, it is a, you know, it's, it's got a long name on it. In fact, it's the 18 to 135 millimeter F3.5 to F5.6 LMOISWR lens. So <laughs> pretty, it's a, a mouthful, but that's okay. We'll talk a bit about what all that means. Um, essentially, though, it's it's a really good all-round, all-purpose lens because it goes from 18 mil to 135 millimeter. You're going to be able to cover a wide range of things. Um, in fact, it covers a 27 mil to 206 millimeter equivalent to full frame because on the XT1 it's a crop sensor. And I find that you know I've, I had it on for a few days, did a lot of shooting with it, and I found that it was really, really useful. I do have my 10 to 24. Uh, currently on the X-T1 here and you know so that covers my wide angle and then I've got 18 135 which covers my zoom and really I don't think I need any more than that. I have got this one here which is a 35mm 1.4 which is good for just wandering around, low light stuff, portraits etc. But essentially that, that's it, I don't need to have any other lenses. Of course they're not weather resistant and this one is. Um, this one here it would be nice if it's weather resistant. Maybe it is. I don't think it is. No, it's not. Um, as where this one is weather resistant. Now, what surprised me, in fact, though, at first, though, was the way that the barrel came out when you zoomed in. Because um, I thought that that would definitely be an area of concern for weather resistance. Uh, you know, because if you got the barrel wet and then you drew it back in, then it's going to get wet. They've actually got a vent here, uh, a weather resistant vent. And so it all passes back out of this vent here. So that stops the dust and the moisture staying inside the lens and damaging your lens, which is a great idea. Um, the lens itself, as you can see, is not huge. And this is the thing I do love about the mirrorless technologies. Everything gets smaller, uh, including the price. That's so a real bonus. And they don't compromise on quality. It's a very good quality lens, feels great. Uh, it's got a 67 millimeter front element. So, you know, if you're gonna use filters, there's plenty of filters that would fit 67 millimeters or adapter rings for 77 millimeter rings. Uh, uh, it's, it is just a great lens, really well built. Uh, everything works nice and smooth. The aperture uh, ring works nice. The zoom ring wor works really nice. It is just a nice all-round lens. One of the things that uh, this particular lens has got some good exposure for is the image stabilization. I've got to say that I was really, really impressed. Um, you know, reading the Fuji site, it says that it's got the world's most advanced five-stop image stabilization function. Now you're probably wondering, what does that all mean? 
But what it means is that, you know, typically with a zoom lens, image stabilization is important because when you are zoomed all the way in, a little bit of movement from the back of the lens, or, you know, shakes the front of the lens, creates blur as you take your photo. So image stabilization is the way to get around that. And what they've done really, really well here is that they've built in um, a gyro system and gyros essentially means that you send elements inside the lens float around. Now, not a lot of people know this, but Fuji actually has been making image stabilization at a much higher level and complex level for a long time for uh, space shuttles, satellites, and uh, helicopter photographic rigs, etc. So they've been uh, involved in creating stabilization, stabilization systems for a long time. And so they know what they're doing. In fact, they're probably more experienced at it than Nikon or Canon and any of those other manufacturers. And so you know you're going to get state of the art. But five stops, I was, I've got to say I was a little bit skeptical. So I put it to the test. And um, to give you an, an example of what five stops is, the, the minimum fully zoomed out on this is 5.6. Now 5.6, um, you know, if I even want a better depth of field, I can go to f8. Let's say I go to f8 and I, let's go walk back five stops. Well, f8 to 5.6 is one, five to f4 is two, f4 to 2.8 is three, 2.8 to 2 is 4, and then 2 to 1.4 is 5. So effectively, you're getting from F8 back to 1.4. That's five stops. So, you know, in any situation, you know you're going to be able to shoot what it is you want to shoot. So I put it to the test, and I started shooting at 200 millimeter. Uh, and typically the rule is if you're going to shoot at 200 millimeter, you wouldn't go less than 1 200th of a second. Otherwise, you're going to get blur. Um, I got it down to 1 30th of a second at 200 millimeter and still was getting sharp shots. Sure, I had to brace myself against the tree to take the shot, but even at 1 30th of a second, I was still managing to get sharp shots handheld at 200 millimeters. That is amazing. Uh, Price-wise, uh, $1,200 Australian. Uh, there was a $200 cashback on until mid-December 2014. So if you are in Australia, I know there's a cashback available and you want to get one of these, great thing. I have not tested it in any weather yet, uh, but I do give my uh, gear a bit of a thrashing. It will be out in the rain at some point and, uh, and I'll give an update if anything fails or goes amiss on me. But certainly, really well-built lens, uh, nice quality, good sharp images, um, comes with everything you need, lens hood, lens caps, front and back. Uh, and there, there's nothing else I can really say about it. That uh, if you're thinking about a good all-round lens for your Fuji XT1 or XC1 or XC2, this is a great addition to your kit, and I think that you'll really enjoy it. Now, hopefully, you enjoyed the video. Just a quick reminder: make sure you hit the subscribe button just up here, uh, because I will give you more tests. In fact, I'm going to do a much more in-depth review of the Fuji XT1 in the future. So, if you subscribe, you'll make sure that you won't miss out on that. And if you've got any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Love to answer your questions. And if I didn't cover something that you wanted to know about, then I'd love to cover that for you too. Until next time, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video.